trains have run again. Bombed, sabotaged, blown up by the Nazis on the run, French railways are rebuilt by Allied engineers. On D-Day, following secret instructions, Marquee patriots wrecked locomotives, derailed trains, and tore out many sections of the railway system not already buckled by Allied bombing. When they started to retreat, the Germans, as they always do, destroyed what they couldn't take with them. Twisted steel and broken stone are monuments to a defeated conqueror. Nazis burned their bridges behind them. Now, the French undo their own good work and help repair what the enemy laid waste. One by one, the rivers of France are crossed. Under the supervision of Army engineers, trained American salvage crews get on the job of rebuilding the railways. Working fast, these soldiers clear away the debris from dynamited bridges, swing new girders and supports into place. Nothing is thrown away that can possibly be used. The French understand how to make the most of what they have. From bolts and nuts to boxcars and locomotives, the work goes on. Brought from America, stored in England, and now shipped in this specially designed craft across the channel, these tank cars are ready to roll from the beachhead to the front. With them come locomotives to replace those the Nazis wrecked. Boxcar after boxcar, a supply train for the armies to the east. A salvage train follows, taking skilled repairmen further up the line. Each of these railway ties serves to bring supplies two feet closer to the front. Foot by foot, mile by mile, the ruined railways are restored. At last, the sections are complete and the switch is thrown. A soldier at the throttle, once again the fast trains thunder across France. More trains a day than the Germans ever ran. First priority goes to hospital trains carrying the wounded, allied or enemy, back from battle. Night and day, these iron arteries of an army throb with life. Gas and oil for the tanks on the battlefront. Together, Frenchmen and Americans have done the job. To meet the German drive, General Eisenhower here at Supreme Headquarters resourcefully regroups his forces, giving Field Marshal Montgomery complete command over the entire northern sector. With Britain's famous Monty cleverly holding Rundstedt back in the north, his American counterpart, General Bradley, blocks the Nazis in the south. The great strategists and the British and American air and ground forces plan the Allied tactics. Britain's Air Marshal Tedder, Allied Supreme Commander Eisenhower, and Field Marshal Montgomery with their aides discuss military operations to stem the Nazi forces blasting through the Ardennes forest. On their great thrust into Belgium, the Reich hoped to reverse the Allied drive into Germany. Under Montgomery, the American First Army at Malmedy held firm against the concentrated Nazi fire. Malmedy is rubble and ruin, but the Allied lines are intact. In the south, Bastogne bears the brunt of the German assault. Americans, encircled here, fought on. 
Rescue planes rush aid to the trapped men. In Bastogne, the artillery crews had at one time barely enough ammunition for 10 minutes firing. Gliders brought doctors and medical supplies through to the trapped troops who defiantly refused every German offer to surrender. From the Dakotas, fall more supplies to the men who held out for seven desperate days. In one day alone, 400 American planes dropped 2,800 bundles of food and ammunition. Along the roads from the south, trucks rush more men and supplies. Escorted by clattering tanks, the relief column makes its way through the German lines. Up ahead in this frozen landscape lies Bastogne, and a corridor must be cut through Nazi fire. German losses in the Ardennes offensive reach a record 100,000 killed, wounded, and captured. Nazi prisoners alone for all of 1944 total a million and three quarters on all European fronts. Hundreds of German tanks are destroyed. The relief column reached Bastogne, herding their prisoners along with them. General McAuliffe is congratulated on his defense of the city by General Taylor, who, in America, when the offensive started, flew the Atlantic to join his besieged men. The men of Bastogne laughed once again. These men held the hinge of the line at Bastogne. They checked the impact and turned the tide to the Nazi assault. Once again, Hitler's timetable miscarried on the Western Front. dawn of a new day east of the Vistula, Russian armored forces attack Praga in Poland in their drive on Warsaw. Colonel General Kosakov and his staff order a barrage of intense gunfire. the infantry move into battle. With the outer defenses of Praga smashed, one of Stalingrad's heroes, Marshal Rokossovsky, visits headquarters here near Praga while tanks and troops push into the town. Polish regiments, fighting with the Russians, march ahead of the army through Praga's streets and receive a warm welcome. On the road to Warsaw, the Russian victory at Praga foretells the day of liberation for Poland. Mm -hmm. 